Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd from Bish's RV here in Coldwater, Michigan today, enjoying some sunshine. Uh, kind of feeling like I'm getting reacquainted with almost like a long lost old friend, the J Flight Bungalow Series, making a return to the marketplace. Last couple years, they just flat out didn't build any of these because they needed that production time and space to build additional travel trailers, uh, you know, in the high volume COVID era. And now that things are kind of settling down a little bit, they're finally having a chance to return here. But they didn't just sit on their thumbs in the meantime. They were taking notes and they were making plans to come back out, not just with the same old bungalow they always had before, but with something uh, touched up and improved. And I, and, and I like what they're doing here. They've done some nice things. So these are eight and a half foot wide. Uh, a lot of people call them park bottles technically it's a destination trailer but i'm not going to split hairs too hard on that you, you know what it's for this is the kind of rv you're probably not towing regularly technically there's nothing that says you can't but if you're going to tow something big and this heavy you'd probably want to tow a fifth wheel because it would handle better this is an rv that says what if we gave you the space of a fifth wheel but instead of the expensive auto leveling and fancy pants suspension and all that jazz what if we put on one flat deck so you don't have to go up and down extra stairs uh for people who want to just like put it at a seasonal site and just park it or it could be like an alternative to a cabin or something like that sometimes you need special permits you know and there's restrictions on what you can build on your own property one of these things typically you can just park it wherever you want uh it's eight foot tall inside uh these only come in the farmhouse decor by the way whereas the rest of the j flights have like a brown interior option these are farmhouse exclusively and because everything is so much bigger i think they have like seven foot slide heights or something like that uh, it just looks and feels enormous inside. Now, it's um, not necessarily on the level of like a trim package of like a big luxury fifth wheel. And that's where it can get a little bit confusing. I want to show you what this one offers, what it doesn't. And then you tell me, what do you, uh, what do you like and what do you dislike? And if you appreciate how we give you that fair approach, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. And I, I don't really know that the camera does it justice, just how big and spacious and open this thing is. Because we have a 102 inch wide body, that's eight and a half feet in, in normal Imperial units. How many centimeters that is, I could figure out, but not off the top of my head right now. Multiply by 2.54, reduce the hypotenuse by the dividend. I, I don't know. Anyway, I, I learned my math from watching Earthworm Jim. Anybody who gets that reference uh, probably really gets my humor. Anyway, what I'm getting at here is it's got eight foot ceilings. It's eight and a half foot wide. It's got the farmhouse decor and about a billion windows. And that makes this thing look and feel huge. I love that hanging light fixture. Bungalows are interesting. Bungalows... Um, you know, they're, they're a member of the J flight family. And I think if you're familiar with the Jayco lineup, certainly like you can kind of see that, uh, you know, similarity, but they do share a little bit of DNA with say like, uh, almost an Eagle in some respects. It's kind of odd how it works out. Now, I think you saw my floor plan in a flash. I record a lot of different footage. I can't remember that, uh, I did stand right up in that slide and it get along, got along just fine. Now, somebody's going to freak out. Because the slide floor is not flush with the main floor. When the weather is a little bit warmer, it definitely will be once you warm up the inside of the RV. I know I'm just wearing a, a vest and stuff uh, outside right now, but it was like 13 degrees this morning. We're having like 40 uh, degree temperature shifts in Michigan right now. And it was darn cold this morning. And the sun hasn't been beaten on this thing long enough to warm up the inside of it. So as a result, the carpetless uh, flap on that floor flush slide out has not relaxed. It has not set down. It's nothing to get freaked out about. That's just how she looks. Now we're going to open all this kitchen up in, in, in full detail, but look at the prep space. Like I love the asymmetrical island and notice the placement of that outlet. Oh, the placement of all the outlets. That's one of the benefits of a stick built wall, a wood studded wall, just like in a house. They can run outlets for appliances over here at the countertop level because Shorty McShort Pants power cords keep coming on appliances year after year. And I swear they keep getting shorter McShorter. Um, I, I'm pretty sure appliance manufacturers somehow think you're supposed to get your, your power for those things via freaking Bluetooth. Uh, I, you know, it's like you need an extension cord just to run anything. Sorry. Obviously I feel very strongly about this. I did not realize I, I felt that aggressively. Anyway, this is all pocket screwed lumber core cabinetry. So it's not stapled fasteners. That is a, uh, a step up from what you often find in here. And uh, th that is a big 18 cubic foot residential fridge. This being something intended for really park use, it does not have any other sort of fridge swaptions. 
But again, being something that might be occupied for extended use, they do pay attention to some of the kitchen stuff like that, uh, the bigger fridge, that bigger like residential size oven, the big four burner insignia stove that normally you do not find in a stick and tin quote uh, level kind of camper. Now over here, you've got that uh, just giant entertainment center staring at you in the corner of Boardwalk and Park Place. And if I sit down and lean all the way back, that's what you're looking at. Notice how the uh, there's this trend where RV manufacturers keep mounting the TV way up toward the ceiling. And it, it wrecks your neck. You know, you get that old school 1980s Nintendo neck when that happens. And you don't have that here. Instead, you got the bunion burner for toasting your toenails down here. Uh, also known as an electric space heater. But did you notice, not only do you have a floor flush living room slide, over here you have a floor flush kitchen and entertainment slide uh, as well. Now take note of that floating ottoman right there. Uh, we are going to actually get to see that moved around and doing a couple different things as uh, this footage kind of rolls on here. Something else they're really good about, um, like if you look under that, uh, that, that middle light over here in the slide, there's one switch that will flick on or off all of the lighting in the slide out. Now, this is still a, a fairly budget sensitive kind of camper. It's big, but still being sensitive to a budget. So they put enough lights in. They don't put like 70 lights in this thing. Sometimes I feel like maybe one or two more wouldn't hurt it. But frankly, I don't necessarily feel like it's, you know, it's dim or anything like that. And the camera is actually fighting some light pollution factors currently. Now up top here, um, most of your bungalow floor plans have this, but a, a residential ceiling fan to help circulate some air around this thing. Very, very handy, depending on the time of year that you're camping or, you know, the weather in your, your given neck of the woods or anything like that. Some of the bungalow models will not have that though, just as, uh, due to space restrictions more than, um, anything else. Uh, let's see here. Actually, I think we pretty much nailed all of this. Let's start diving into our storage. And actually, just, ooh, hold on. I spot another cool little detail over here. See that set of power outlets right below the table line? That could be a handy little laptop situation right there. But, uh, storage. Let's start up here because they actually gave us storage above the seating right there. And there's that floating ottoman that we talked about. Also has a nice little flip top for storage. Now they nailed this island. Has dedicated wastebasket space, and then the rest of it is shelving to really maximize storage. Um, you've got that dedicated pantry. My only concern with the pantry is they gave it a knob that you don't twist, you just pull on it. But that's just, uh, I, I'm just a cl clumsy oaf idiot like that. Looking around here, uh, you know, if you are going to spend an extended time in the RV, this is a kitchen that you can enjoy. It's enough living space that you could really stretch out. You don't feel like you're just packed and stacked and racked right on top of one another. You can lounge on that rear couch and pivot the TV around and split the difference and still watch from the theater or the sofa or pivot the TV toward the dining, uh, which could be really cool if you're, uh, say, you know, doing a little bit of like a... Um, you know, a, a game day situation. You've got people over watching the Super Bowl. I don't, know, I don't know, whatever you might do with it. I'm not a sports baller. I don't know all the different sports that are out there, but you get the idea. It, it has a lot of space to spend a long time in here, but nothing says you have to. If you just want to visit on the weekend just to get away from your life, man, that, that works. That works too. You can do whatever you want. I really like the placement of those household outlets uh, above the rear stands once again. That's one of the benefits of a stick-built trailer that people don't consider. A lot of times people think aluminum framed and laminated is just categorically superior. And it's not. It's different. It has different advantages. Uh, the fact is it's harder for a laminated RV to put outlets in good positions on walls. Uh, and a lot of manufacturers just flat out won't and don't. And you can see here in this one, that is certainly not the case. Now, backing up a little bit, our control panel is nicely masked away up here. Um, it's not a, a, like a specific Bluetooth control panel, but all your switches and everything are all in one spot. You might notice there's just uh, blank punch outs for the water heater because this is an on-demand water heater. It doesn't have the gas and electric mode like a lot of the other J-Flights typically do. And this over here, this big 60-inch residential uh, sliding patio door right there. I am a sucker for vertical Venetian blinds. I had some of those in a room, uh, in my room as a kid. I have always, always liked those things. Now, sliding over here to the bathroom, I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm right-handed. 
I keep expecting the light switch to be over on the right-hand side, but it's actually over here. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's just, for whatever reason, that's just how my brain works. Now, let me scan back down a little bit here. Sorry, I don't want to make you motion sick. I do try to move the camera slowly. Uh, if I ever start moving it too fast, just yell at me. I won't hear you, but it's okay to yell at me. You see that you have the seat there in the shower, but that is a big fifth wheel size shower and the headroom in here. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I mean, that that is absolutely fantastic with those eight, eight foot ceilings. I don't know that they even needed to put a skylight in there, but it does help with the lighting. Now, looking at the um, the medicine cabinet, you know, and the, the storage below the sink, I would say I'd prefer, like, maybe not a shelf below the sink for a wastebasket, but with this having that extra wide body, there's a nice little slot right there that I think you could put a, uh, a wastebasket if you needed it. Now, backing up and pivoting you to the right, we're going to see our porcelain foot uh, flush toilet over here. And um, again, with that wide body, there's tons of space around that left arm, right arm. I did not feel like anything was an issue there. And obviously, you can see we've got ourselves that drunken octopus fight club for your... Uh, you know, hanging up your wet towels, you also have either a huge chunk of extra storage or you have that washer dryer prep space right there. So once again, if you are going to use this maybe as an alternative to a home, maybe you found the housing market kind of pricing you out a little bit, this could be something that maybe might work for you. Now, uh, bedroom lights right over here. There's, all, oop, that's the wrong switch. There's also this other switch right here, which is for uh, I guess what I might call like your, your patio scare lights, um, you know, on the uh, outside of the RV. So if you hear a little bump in the night, you can figure out what's going on. You can see that we can get these with 50 amp and a second air conditioner. There's no way, personally, no way I could even imagine something like this being outfitted with single air conditioner only. Um, just, I mean, there's way too much cubic foot of space in here uh, to, to try to have one air conditioner keep up. Now, if somebody has some actual ownership experience to the contrary, please share. But I mean, maybe I'm wrong. You tell me, is second air conditioner the right call here? I'm guessing you're going to say it is. Uh, you can also get queen or king bed. If you notice, by the way, the bed base is queen size. You see how much the mattress hangs off the side. The decking naturally goes out to support the edge of the mattress so you don't slump and fall off the thing. I think I've demonstrated that in a couple of videos, but I'm bruised up enough right now. I don't really feel like doing that. This is another one of those areas that I felt like uh, on the white part of that ceiling inside the slide out, one light would have been nice, but the slide is so tall, you would have to climb all over the bed to get to it. So it's not that it's not enough lighting, it's just minimal but I get why it's not there. You do at least have those little bendy white and blue either reading or spotlights. And obviously you've got the breeze windows on both sides of the bed. And because it is so tall, Alakazam, they opened it up and gave you all the storage they could, including easy lift storage down below the bed. Now next to the bed, you might notice how there's not doors on the, uh, the face of that storage right there. When the slide closes, if you're not paying attention, that door could open behind the slide flange and bust it. So... I'm going to give them a little bit of a pass on that because they have basically husband-proof this thing so that I don't break the thing and have to look dumb and apologize in front of my wife and kid, which, frankly, I do enough on a given day every day regardless. Now, they, they did kind of give it, like, um because this has that, like, angled inward front nose corners, they gave it a big central closet, and they didn't have to worry about the washer-dryer uh, in there, but you've got these, like, corner windows over here, because if they fully extended that closet over, it, it wouldn't be deep enough to actually be useful, you know? Now, by the way, every single one of these air vents can be closed and turned individually. You're probably either going to need to step on the bed or get a step stool to do it, but the fact is uh, you can if you wanted to. Now, over here across from the bed, uh, we've got our second entry door, and, um, you know, as opposed to sliding patio, patio door, that's a traditional RV door. It does have a deadbolt, so you don't got to worry about the neighbors uh, surprising you or anything like that. And you can put a privacy shade in that. That is one, that's probably one of the things I would do very quickly in this RV if it were me. I would put either that or something on the screen door to kind of close that off a, a little bit. But you may also notice you got your TV hookups in here. Now, they are pretty high in the sky, but when you're laying in bed craning your neck forward, it's actually not a terrible position to have the television in. Now, normally I, I show things with the slides closed and I call it road mode, but with a, an RV like this that, I mean, while people could decide they want to tow it regularly, I don't think most people are going to do that. 
I, I'm going to call this like storage mode when it's at the seasonal campsite or, you know, if you want to get inside this thing and get it packed up, I thought I'd give you a look at what you could and could not get to. And if you appreciate the extra little looks and the information that we provide you, make sure you hit that little uh, subscribe button. Now, since this does kind of mirror uh, a, a popular triple slide fifth wheel floor plan, it does really have very similar traveling access. Now, if things look a little bit darker and a little less exciting, it's because I've really kind of simulated true storage mode here by shutting off all of the lights. So when this thing is just, you know, sitting at its storage site, this is kind of what it might look like. Or, you know, if you have to bring them home from the seasonal site at the end of the season or something like that. One of the things I think is really cool um, even when the slide is closed, they made it so you could still get to the refrigerator, which very few destination trailers uh, consider that fact right there. Being able to pack that fridge up, you know, like, uh, you know, sometimes people like to get the RV ready a couple days before they go out or something like that. Like, that can be really handy. Now, obviously, you're going to want to make sure you have power going to the RV, um, <laughs> you know, while it is sitting there. But the fact that you can get to the bedroom, the bathroom, and the fridge... That's an awesome one, two, three combo right there. Now, just for the sake of consistency, this is usually in the video where I'm going to flash the uh, weights and the measures over on the left side of the screen. Uh, again, hopefully I did remember to do that here as well. I, I want to talk about transporting this RV. Um, and the reason I specify transporting and not necessarily towing, I don't know that this is the kind of RV that people are really going to be towing regularly. There are certainly things better suited for that, uh, even with very similar floor plans. And this thing, it's 40 feet long. It's 13,000 pounds gross weight. It's the size and the weight of a fifth wheel. It's something that isn't really expected to be towed regularly. So it has no fancy suspension. It has no, uh, nothing to make the towing experience a little bit nicer here, like you might expect on a fifth wheel. You know, this is going to be more for destination park use, whereas a fifth wheel might be a little bit more for traveling if this is the kind of layout you're looking for. Now, let me also throw another idea at you here. These tend to be RVs that people will purchase who don't even have a tow vehicle. People like me with my little Kia Soul, uh, this would be a great camper, basically. Instead of having it a, a big old expensive truck that is required to haul this in a truck payment, pay somebody a chunk of money one time to just have it delivered and be done with it. A lot of people go that route with these big things right here, uh, whether it's local, cross country, whatever the case may be. Now, uh, again, keep in mind, you see how there's just the, the simple factory wood paneling over those front windows. Normally, uh, you'd get a lot more light there. It'd look a lot more welcoming. <laughs> this thing kind of looks like it's got like a weird blindfold face going on. It's like some kind of like uh, unfinished emoji or something. I, I don't know. Anyway, my point is that we leave those on as a courtesy to our customers. It would look better on camera. It would look better here on the lot with those uh, covers off, but we definitely want those things to be protected during transit. And those are just common windows. They're not a front travel trailer windshield like you tend to get out there, meaning it's not a like a double pane bonded glass like you typically get. Now, again, this is a little bit more of a specialized piece of hardware. I do like that they still stick with the uh, dual 30 pound propane tanks, but you might notice just a manual leveling jack. You might notice uh, conventional stabilizers here this is the kind of RV some people will, uh, they, they have a tendency to like support with blocks. Once you set it, once you level it, you tend to just uh, like Ron Popeil this thing. You set it and forget it, you know. Um, <laughs> it's not the kind of rig that people are hauling around all the, you know, the live long day. Now we are looking at one here with the standard uh, aluminum skin exterior. Uh, that I do believe now, uh, again, they've gone through some revisions since the last time these bungalows came out and I did not have the opportunity to review an options list before I came here. I do believe there is a smooth skin option that'll make it look a little bit more like the front of this RV. Personally, I think that would church this thing up pretty nicely. I think it would look really good with all of that wavy skin and it would be much easier to clean with a smooth skin as opposed to all those nooks and crannies. So grandpa and grandma, if you're the ones buying this, uh, you know, if you got, you know, teenage kind of uh, grandkids, tell them they get to come camp with grandpa and grandma, but they get to help clean the RV so that their young shoulders can help do some work here. <laughs> now, there is also uh, the uh, the weather package to discuss. You see the uh, enclosed underbelly here. These can have a uh, heated belly. There's also a radiant barrier option. Now, what I cannot tell you is that this RV can be upgraded to a four seasons package. Now, I'm, I can guarantee you somebody out there will say that, 
but what you can get out of this is a solid extended season package. Now, I don't normally open storage live on camera like this, but I was dumb and forgot to open this previously. This is a really critical space right here because this area underneath the bed is the only source of exterior storage. That is just uh, one of the general hiccups and hangups when it comes to destination trailers. They have two things typically when it comes to outside storage. They come with Jack and Squad. Kind of like the Blues Brothers when they went to, uh, you know, that one country bar. That place played both kinds of music, country and western. <laughs> I, that is, oh, man. I miss... John Belushi, all those, gosh, what a, what a monster, monster talent lost. R Sorry, I'm just waxing poetically over here. Now, in the world of destination trailers, sometimes you have a gas electric um, water heater. Sometimes, uh, like Salem Wildwood in the Lodge series tends to do these big, like, 20-gallon residential uh, style water heaters. Jayco went with a on-demand water heater here. So, uh, basically, when, when you're cooking, when you want to take long showers, even if it's back-to-back, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be able to do that. Now, over here next to our single sewer outlet, because if you notice, this is a single-headed sewer monster with that uh, one stink pickle exhaust port right there. It is not a two-headed sewer monster. Uh, you do have that handy outside shower and black flush over here. Like, all the hookups, to me, are in the best, most logical place. Now, little details, easy to miss. You might notice the uh, fully tinted windows, and pretty much every window in this thing does open for airflow, which is a nice touch when you're in this budget range, something uh, not every manufacturer does. And that rectangle, that little guy on the face of the slide, that is your stovetop heat exhaust vent. Once again, that is one of those details that a shocking number of even luxury fifth wheels do not include those things. It's always kind of just baffled my mind completely. Now, this thing does have a fully walkable roof. For whatever reason, destination trailers rarely, rarely have rear ladders. I've never fully understood it. I've never really wrapped my head around it. Um, I've asked a factory rep once. They said, well, you know, it's kind of dangerous for people to climb that high. I said, okay, first of all, fifth wheels have ladders, and they are this tall or taller. And secondly, uh, aspects like, you know, your, your warranty up on the roof basically requires people to get up there periodically to check seals and perform routine maintenance. And to that, I got, well, we don't do it. <laughs> you know, that's just one of those little difference factors right here. Now we got pinched off in the screen. You know what's sad about me walking so close to the corner right there? I actually asked our tractor driver to uh, move this one for me, and I'm the one that told him when to stop, but I was on the other side of the RV, and I didn't realize we were still really close to that Cougar fifth wheel right there. So... Um, apologies, I have failed. I shall endeavor to persevere. So what do you think about the return of the J-Flight Bungalow series here? Um, I mentioned a couple different options along the way. I'd love to hear from you if you chime in, you know, how you'd want one of these built, you know, where they nailed it, where they failed it, all those things I typically ask for you. Uh, I will leave you a link, of course, uh, in the description for pricing and availability. That can always show you where we have one of these parked and what we're asking on a specific model with its specific loadout, with its specific shipping, whether you're curious or whether you're serious at the time that's right for you, whether it's right after this posts or a year later, that will be the best way to get you the most accurate current information in your time frame. And you don't have to give us your grandmother's blood type and social security number. And we don't do hidden dealer fees. Um, apologies for the convenience. So uh, when you're ready, we're ready. I will also leave a link to uh, the most comparable Salem or Wildwood Lodge floor plan. If you would like to kind of compare to see what else might be available in this space and maybe even a couple links to a few similar floor plan fifth wheels or other big travel trailers that aren't quite the full on destination size. And if I forget to do that, which I uh, have a tendency of doing, leave me a little note that says, hey, you forgot the links, nerd. And uh, I'll do my best to fill them in. And until next time. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.